Good morning, my name's Dan and uh, I'm from DIY Gardening and welcome to another short video. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about pH soil testing strips, uh, what they're for, how to use them and what sort of results that you can expect. Now there's a, quite a few reasons why you may want to test your soil using one of these. For example, if you're growing acid loving plants, you need to know that you've got the right pH level in the soil, otherwise the plants are not going to thrive. Uh, as for me, well, I've been growing a few hydrangeas behind me for a number of years and I'd like to change the colour of them. So if I can get the pH level down to about 5.5, the colour should go from red to purple. Or if you've got pink hydrangeas, it should turn a nice deep blue. So the only way to know that I've got the soil down to the right pH level is by regular testing with these. So today I'm just going to take a few soil samples, uh, do a test, show you how it works and we can have a look at the results. And the product I'm using today is Garden Tutors Soil pH Test Strips. You get a hundred of these in a box. I think they cost about six pounds. They're really cheap. They don't tell you how much um, potassium etc is in the soil but they will just give you a fairly accurate range of what the pH level is. Anyway, let's get on and uh, I'll show you how this works. Okay, so if you've never done this before, you start off with four level tablespoons of soil and put that into a small cup. That can be anything from a ceramic cup to uh, a glass, to even a, a piece of plastic which is just cut off the end of a bottle. As long as it's clean thoroughly, it'll be absolutely fine. Um, once you put the four level tablespoons of soil in there, you'll need to add maybe four, four or five level tablespoons of distilled water. And if you don't know how to distill water, have a look on YouTube. There are literally hundreds of videos. It doesn't take very long. You can do this just with uh, a couple of pots and pans uh, on your on your gas or your electric stove. It doesn't take very long at all to get distilled water. Now, once you've done that, I recommend leaving the mixture alone for about an hour, just so uh, anything that's in the soil can dissolve into the water. So just leave that alone for an hour and then come back. So once you've got the water and the soil mixed together, all you need to do is to get the pH strip and dip that in and to just hold that in there for about 30 seconds. Okay, that's been about 30 seconds. So if you lift the stick out and just shake off any of the dirt and the liquid, we can now see that the three squares have changed color and we can now hold them up and we can see roughly whereabouts it should be on the chart. Now you'll never get all three exactly the same. There's usually one that will be a little bit out of alignment. So your best bet is to take an average of the three. So you can see the blue one at the top is probably about 6.5. And I would say the pink one is about 6.5. But the orange one is probably closer to seven and a half, between seven and seven and a half. So I'd say an average is probably about 6.7, maybe 6.8 of the three. And that is how you work out the soil pH. So there you have it. That was uh, fairly straightforward to uh, get the results from those test strips. So now I know what's going on with the soil. I know that there's far too much alkaline in that soil for me to turn my hydrangea flowers from uh, pink to blue or from red to purple. So I would need to start adding in some ericaceous soil and some additives to the soil to get that uh, pH level down, which would mean there's more uh, acid in the soil. That would then change uh, the color of the flowers. And obviously if I was growing heathers, rhododendrons, azaleas or something like that, I would definitely want to be changing the composition um, so the pH of that soil level again by putting additives and, and ericaceous uh, compost mixing that in on a regular basis into the soil so the plants have the absolute you know perfect growing medium um, so that's it that's how you carry out the test as for me I'm going to start putting my additives into my uh, into my pots that are holding my uh, hydrangeas and I'll carry out these tests once a week I'll just come out once a week and do that test and just keep an eye on the soil level and hopefully get that pH level down and then I should start to see the, uh, the flowers as they come into bloom they should uh, start to change colour now there are a couple of things that you can do differently um, you can instead of putting the 
strip directly into the muddy water, you can filter the water first to get all of the mud out so you just have liquid left. You could use a coffee filter, for example, a paper filter that you put coffee through. That would bring out, uh, that would, uh, sorry, filter out all the dirt and it would just leave the liquid in the bottom. Also, if you want to carry out multiple tests, it's probably best to use a different jar for each one rather than keep putting the strip back into the same into the same jar or the same pot because that obviously does have chemicals on the end of each strip and that can alter the results for the next test so um, so that's it look i really hope that you uh, enjoyed this video my name's dan i'm from diy gardening uh, i really appreciate a like and a subscribe i am a small business so uh, the more likes and subscribers i get the more prominent youtube will show my videos which is a good thing so thanks once again and my name's dan from diy gardening